السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي حج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد Brothers and sisters in Islam Holding on to things and or people that we can't control is the source of much of our stress, pain, and disappointment in life. Human beings have a tendency to hold on to people and or situations because of how it makes us feel about ourselves, despite how toxic it may be and how it affects our own mental and physical well-being. Since the beginning of our existence, man has had a bad habit of taking on the burdens and responsibilities that are above his moral and spiritual capacity, starting with the greatest of all burdens, and that is the burden of free will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna aradna al-amanata ala samawati wal ardi wal jibal, fa abayna an yahmilnaha wa ashbaqana minha, wa hamalaha al-insanu innahu kana zalooman jahoolah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, we offer the trust of free will to the heavens, the earth, and the mountain. And they all refuse to carry it. And they considered it a heavy burden to carry. They considered it a heavy burden to carry. 
To be to have free will means to be able to choose your actions and your 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 behaviors and to deal with the consequences that come along with it. That's what free will means. It doesn't mean the, the freedom to do whatever you want to do. Free will means to the ability to choose your actions. But with choosing your actions, with responsibility comes accountability. And this is something that even until today, most human beings still do not understand the seriousness of this. We think that I have a past to do this, and there is no accountability that is waiting for me on the other end of it. That indeed we offer the trust of free will to the heavens, the earth, and the mountains. And they all refuse to carry this. And they considered it a heavy burden to carry. And the human being carried it. And Allah described him, إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا jahula, And he was ignorant and oppressive to himself as a result. We could have refused, just like the heavens, the earth, and the mountains, which are greater forms of creation than the human being will ever be. And as great and as magnificent as these forms of creation are, they refuse to carry this burden of free will. But here goes the human being, give it to me, I'll take it. إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا Jahula, he was ignorant and oppressive. This behavior has morphed over generations as the human need for validation has increased while man's sense of self-worth has decreased. That means when our sense of self-worth decreases, we begin to search for ways in which to validate ourselves. It begins to increase. And even though the methods that we use to seek validation are unhealthy and inconsequential, we still do it anyway. In Islam, brothers and sisters, we are taught to be responsible for our own burdens, our own choices, our own behaviors, our own emotions. We are all responsible for that individually. We are taught to be responsible for our own burdens and not to take on the burdens of others. This is known as attachment. When you take on the burdens of others, this is called an unhealthy attachment style, which will have us emotionally, mentally, and spiritually fixated on something or someone that we need to feel whole or to feel valid, even at the expense of our own happiness. Many of us, we conflate, we conflate, we conflate or we confuse emotional gratification with happiness. Not realizing that much of our emotional gratification entails carrying the burdens of others. What I mean by emotional gratification is that you want to do something to make yourself feel better. So when you see someone hurting, you see someone in trouble, we rush to try to help that person. More than the person is willing to help themselves at times. And I'm going to leave you with something that I'm learning to master myself in today's time. Never do something for someone that they can do for themselves. I refuse. I don't care if it's a spouse, a child, a parent, a friend, companion. I don't care who you are. I refuse to do for you what you have the ability to do for yourself. Because if you are not going to do it for yourself, you don't care enough about you to do it for yourself. Why should I care about you more than you care about yourself? Absolutely not. I refuse as a matter of fact, our religion prohibits this type of behavior because it goes beyond the boundaries of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us in terms of friendships and relationships. There are boundaries in our religion as it relates to our brotherhood, our sisterhood in Islam. And you don't get to transgress those boundaries with you know, this, this love, this unconditional love that we have. Our love for one another as Muslims, our love for one another as relatives and, and you know, family members, they have conditions, all of them. The Prophet ﷺ said there are three qualities. Whoever possesses them, they will taste the sweetness of Iman. Halawat al Iman. The first is that you love Allah and His Messenger more than you love anyone else. And this and that within itself means that if you cannot love anyone more than you love Allah and His Messenger, that means that anyone other than Allah and His Messenger, there is a limitation to how much you love them. 
The second one is the Prophet Sallallahu said, and you hibbul mar' la yuhibbuhu illa lillah, is that you love an individual and you only love him for the sake of Allah. Even for our non-Muslim family members, we love them for the sake of Allah. We love them because this is the commandment of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to love you. And we're going to see in one of the narrations that I'm going to mention today how this non-Muslim mother used this principle in our religion against her own Muslim child. And many of us, we don't understand that much of our emotional gratification entails carrying the burdens of others. However, true happiness is rooted in the freedom from the burdens of others. A provision that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in his book and in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Listen to this ayah, brothers and sisters. The next time you feel compelled to take on somebody else's burden, the next time you feel compelled to go above and beyond for someone who refuses to go above and beyond for themselves. The next time someone tries to guilt trip you into taking emotional responsibility for their behaviors and their actions. I want you to think about this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَا تَزِرُوا وَازِرَةٌ وَزْرَ أُخْرَى وَإِن تَدْعُوا مُثْقَالَةٌ مُثْقَالَةٌ إِلَى حَمْلِهَا لَا يُحْمِلْ مِنْهُ شَيْءٍ وَلَوْ كَانَ ذَا قُرْبَةٌ إِنَّمَا تُنْذِرُ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ وَأَقَامُ الصَّلَةِ وَمَنْ تَزَكَّى فَإِنَّمَا يَتَزَكَّى لِنَفْسِهِ وَإِلَى اللَّهِ الْمَصِيرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this beautiful verse, No bearer of burdens shall bear the burden of another. لا تزيل وازرة وزرة أخرى No bearer of burdens shall bear the burden of another. If a head, heavy Latin person with a burden shall call on another to carry his burden, none of it shall be carried by the other, even if it be your next of kin. Haram for you to carry somebody else's burden, even if it is your close family members or relatives. I'm not carrying that burden. Don't guilt trip me into taking responsibility for your behaviors, your actions, your emotions. Those are yours. You carry it. Your actions, you carry it. Your responsibility, not mine. You're angry, then that's your emotion. You are responsible for managing that, not me. Even if I was the one to cause the emotion, the emotion is still yours. It's still your responsibility to manage. It's not my job to manage your emotions. We're human beings. We make mistakes. We trigger each other by statements and actions that we don't understand how deep that statement or action that I've made triggers you going all the way back to your childhood. How am I supposed to know that? That's your responsibility. If you're triggered by something your spouse, you're triggered by something your parent, your child says to you, then you have to look deep within yourself to ask yourself, why did that trigger me? And what do I need to do with this emotion that has now come to the surface? That's your responsibility. We live in a time where we're making other people responsible for how we feel. That's the greatest form of gaslighting. No bearer of burdens shall bear the burden of another. If someone is carrying a heavy load and he should call on another to carry his load for him, none of it shall be carried even if it was his close relative or kin. And indeed, you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, can only warn those who fear their Lord in the unseen and establish the salat, and whoever purifies himself, purifies himself for himself, and to Allah is your return. This ayat, let's dissect and unpack this ayat really quickly. This ayat, it means that man is only responsible for carrying his own burdens. And when I mean his own burdens, I mean... Essentially, his actions, his behaviors, and the consequences that result in his actions and behaviors. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not place the burden of someone else on the shoulders of, of another individual as that will be essentially tasking man with more than he has the capacity to bear, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us that he would never do. Allah promised us that he would never burden us with more than we have the capacity to bear. So if Allah put on us the burdens of others, then that would essentially make God oppressive, giving us more than what he said he would give us. 
And this within itself refutes the Christian concept of man being born in sin, carrying the sins of Adam. We don't carry the sins of Adam. The sin, that the mistake that Adam made was the mistake that Adam made. Other human beings are now, now responsible, born into sin as a result of the mistake or sin of someone else. Blasphemous. It is an insult to God to accuse him of such. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا ما آتاها وسيجعل الله بعد عسري يسرا That Allah will not bear in a soul with more than he has given it the capacity to bear. And Allah will make after difficulty ease. The only exception to this rule where you would carry the burden of someone else is in the case of an individual who introduces others to unhealthy, toxic, sinful behaviors that he himself initiated. And it becomes a cause for other people to commit sin and disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In that case, he will carry the weight of the sin and he will carry the weight of the sin of everyone who practices that sin without anything being diminished from their own sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you go back to the story of the two sons of Adam, Habil and Qabil, and one of the sons uh, aimed to kill the other son. His brother said to him before he killed him, he said, إِنِّي أُرِيدُ أَن تَبُوءَ بِإِثْمِي وَإِثْمِكَ فَتَكُونَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ النَّارِ وَذَارِكَ جَزَاءُ الظَّالِمِينَ He said, when you, stretch, when you stretch your hand out to me to kill me, I will not stretch my hand out to you to kill you. I indeed fear Allah. I want you to bear the sin of you killing me and to bear my sins, the sins that I have committed. You are going to alleviate me of the sins that I committed by killing me. You're going to carry your sin and you're going to carry my sins as well. And that is the reward of those who are unjust. That is the reward. That is the recompense of those who are oppressive. You carry your sin, the sin of oppression, and then you carry the sin of the person that you are oppressing. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said about this, and this is very important, especially with the casual murder that goes on in many of our communities amongst many young Muslims. I want you to think about that. The next time you think about pulling the trigger, the next time you think about taking out a knife and stabbing someone or doing bodily harm to someone, you are going to carry your sin and you're going to carry the sin of the person that you oppressed. It's a heavy burden to carry. Because you have to deal with your own sins. Allah says, if you go back to the eye, and I don't think that we paid attention. Allah says that no bearer of burdens shall carry the burden of someone else. Meaning you got your own burdens to worry about. I have enough to worry about with me and what I do than to be carrying somebody else's sins too because of my reckless behavior. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned an authentic hadith. He said, لا تقتلوا نفس ظلمة إلا كان على ابن آدم الأول كفل من دمها لأنه هو أول من سن القتل. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that no soul is killed. No person, no human being is killed in this life except that it is upon a, a share of that sin falls on the shoulders of of the son of Adam who killed his brother because he was the first one to commit murder in the earth. I want you to think about all of the murders that have taken place on earth. Kabil will carry those sins along with the sin of killing his own brother. Yom al Man, subhanAllah. You just think about the amount of people killed, by Hiroshima, killed in Hiroshima alone. Thousands of people. You think about the people who were killed in the World Trade Center. Think about the, the Twin Towers and the thousands of people who died. You think about that. Hundreds of young black men that are murdered on you know, inner city streets every single night. And every single body that falls, the sin, the burden of that sin falls on the shoulders of Corbin because he was the first one to initiate murder on the earth. So I want you to think about your behavior and think about the things that you have introduced your children to. Maybe your child didn't know about porn until he saw his dad looking at porn. Maybe, his, maybe the daughter never knew about disrespecting a man until she heard her mother disrespecting her husband. 
You are introducing your children to behaviors that they will continue to do. And every single time they do it, you get the sin of introducing them to it and you get the sin of them practicing it. Think about that. Heavy burden to carry. Heavy burden to carry. Your child knew nothing about smoking weed until he saw his mom or his dad smoking weed. Saw his dad smoking cigarettes. Saw his dad using profanity. Listen to his mom curse his father, curse her father out. Using profanity. Now the child uses profanity. You introduce the child to that. And you have to carry the weight, the burden of doing the sin and introducing the person to it. And every time they do it, you get the sin right along with it. You think about people, Muslims, who have gone onto social media. Woman who takes off her hijab and puts makeup on and does a makeup tutorial with no hijab on. And every Muslim girl who clicks on that, on that video and watches you unravel your hijab, watches you take off your crown, the crown that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you to distinguish you from every other woman in the world. And she decides because of watching you take off your hijab, she wants to now go take off her hijab. You bear the burden of that as well. Social media has made going to the hellfire so easy today. Social media has made it so easy for people to go to hell today. SubhanAllah. In another hadith, the Prophet وسلم, he said, Man sanna fil Islam sunnatan sayyi'ah falahu wazruha wa wazru man amila biha wa la yanqusu min awzarihim shay'ah. The Prophet وسلم, said, whoever starts a bad practice, an innovation in, our, in my religion, an innovation in Islam, start to do a practice that the Prophet وسلم, didn't do, the Sahaba didn't do, the three generations after them didn't practice, celebrating the Prophet وسلم's birthday. I'm showing my love to the Prophet وسلم. And as Imam Malik mentioned in a general principle, if there was any good in it, the Sahaba would have beaten us to it. You think you're going to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better than the companions who were there, whom the Quran was revealed about? You're going to practice Islam better than they did? You're going to introduce something new into Islam that they didn't introduce? Whoever starts a bad sunnah, a bad practice in my religion, innovates anything new into my religion, then he gets the sin of innovating it, and he gets the sin of everyone who practices it without the sin being diminished from the people who practice it themselves. You carry that. Be mindful of your actions, your behaviors, brothers and sisters. And this is important to comprehend because it helps us to correct the misnomer that has led to many unsavory behaviors, including shirk. The disbelievers of Quraysh, they wouldn't leave their shirk, not because they didn't understand la ilaha illallah, one of the reasons why they refused to leave their idolatry was because of a belief that they had that if we leave shirk and we embrace la ilaha illallah, we embrace tawheed, we are going to carry the sins of our forefathers and ancestors. That's one of the reasons that they never left. Part of it was arrogance, and part of it was the fear of carrying the sins of their forefathers. Which is why Allah revealed the ayah that I just quoted, and that is that no bearer of burdens will carry the burden of another. Allah was trying to alleviate them of that burden. But they believed that if we leave our idols and we embrace Tawheed, we are going to carry the sins of our forefathers and our ancestors. This is the reason why Abu Talib, while on his deathbed, when the Prophet wasallam said to him, Ya Ammi, kun la ilaha illallah, oh my uncle, say la ilaha illallah. I will argue on your behalf in front of Allah Yom al Qiyamah. Just say La ilaha illallah. And Abu Jahl said, Are you turning away from the idols of your forefathers? And what did he do? He couldn't say La ilaha illallah. SubhanAllah Ladin led to a man dying on shirk, the worst sin that a person could, create, could commit. Out of a fear that I'm going to carry the burdens of somebody else. This misnomer, this, un, this uh, belief has also led many of the Christians to believe that man is born into sin, carrying the mistakes of their father Adam, 
And then they added to that to make matters worse. God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. So now they believe that they have to go through another human being just like them to get to God. They are too impure to approach God themselves. This is the belief. I'm carrying the sins of my father, so I'm born in sin. And in Islam, we don't believe that we're born in sin. We're born pure because Adam repented. That's the part in the Bible that's left out of the story. And Allah taught Adam how to repent, and Adam repented, and Allah accepted his repentance. And as the Prophet said, The person who repents from a sin sincerely is like a person who never committed the sin to begin with. So how are we born in the sins of Adam? We are born in the repentance of Adam, not the sin of Adam. We're not born in sin. The Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever performs Hajj and perfects his Hajj and doesn't ruin his Hajj will return home like what? Like the day his mother gave birth to him, free from sin. Meaning, the day your mother gave birth to you, you were not born in sin. But this is that belief that I'm carrying the sins of my father Adam. And as a result of that, it led to them committing shirk, meaning they led to them believing that they were not pure enough to approach God himself. And they have to go through an intermediary, which is the quintessential definition of idolatry. To take it a step further, many Christians believe that women carry the sin of Eve. Of Eve uh, encouraging Adam to eat from the tree. So as a result of that, every woman in some Christian beliefs that women carry the sin of Eve, which means that women are inherently treacherous and disloyal. There was a time right here in America where the debate amongst Christian scholars was, Does, do women even have a soul? Confused. From the earliest of times. And then you chide and you blame and shame and condemn Muslim women for wearing a hijab. You got the nerve to talk. You were confused just years ago whether or not a woman had a soul. And now all of a sudden we go to the opposite extreme of liberating women from the shackles of patriarchy and marriage. And now she's free to roam the world and do her. Confused. Still confused. And to add to that even further, the woman can change her gender now and become a man. Confused. We don't know what to do with women in this country. We don't know what to do with women in this country. And then we have the audacity to look at the system of Islam and to criticize and condemn Muslim women for the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised them and, and separated them from the rest of the women of the world. And it's very unfortunate that many of our Muslim women who are part of this beautiful system would much rather be like the rest of the women out there instead of the woman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to be in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so the righteous women are obedient and they preserve in their husband's absence what Allah would have them preserve. Their chastity, his wealth, his honor, her honor. This is Islam. But this is what many of our women don't want today. They want what the world is offering, the confusion that the world is offering today. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Bani Israel when he sent down to them manna and quails, sent them birds from the sky, directly from God. And they said, no, we want some of what the earth produces. They said, no, we can't be patient with one type of food. We can't be patient with one type of food. You want us to eat one type of food for the rest of our lives? Meanwhile, this is the food you asked God for, and he gave it to you. And then you turn around and say, you want me to eat this for the rest of my life? I want what the earth produces. What about the lentils and the onions and the tomatoes and all of the things that the, world, that the earth produces? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to say to Musa, will you trade that which is greater for that which is lesser? Go down to the city and you can find anything that you want from the earth. But you can never find what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has except with him. 
This is our Muslim women today. You want what the earth produces instead of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has designated for you. The role that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has designated for you. And let me know how that worked out for you. Let us, let the Muslim men, let us know how that works out for you. And that's not to take the burden off of Muslim men because we have a lot of work to do on ourselves as well. But for the most part, Muslim men haven't deviated from their role. We haven't deviated from our role. We deviated from our role because we see it's a response to what we see happening in front of us. You don't need a man. You don't need marriage. You don't need a father for your children. All you need is money and a bag and you good. Let me know how that worked out for you. <clears throat> Thus man is an eternal carrier of other people's burdens, which translates into carrying the burdens of our families, our spouses, our children, until it is a behavior that is culturally expected of us. This entire philosophy is emotionally, mentally, spiritually draining, making the obligation of unlearning this behavior something that is incumbent upon every single one of us so that we can experience true happiness, the true happiness that is associated with the freedom from other people's burdens. And letting go of other people's burdens doesn't mean giving up on them. It just, it's not a defeatist philosophy. It's a utopian philosophy. I'm focusing on what makes me happy. I'm not giving up on you. As they have a saying now, let go and let God. Sometimes that's correct. You Sometimes you got to let go and let Allah handle it. It's above me. It's above me. And I'm not going to take on more than what I have the capacity to bear. Not for you, 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 or you. I don't care who you are. I'm not going to do it. And an example of this is an incident. I want to give you an example of something that happened during the time of the Prophet wasallam to show you how this plays out in our day-to-day -day lives. And we'll do it at the second half of the khutbah, inshallah ta'ala. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما جاء فيه من الآيات والذكر الحكيم أقول ما تسمعون أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله حمد كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيك ما يحب ربنا ويرضى وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. During the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, there was a man who converted to Islam at the age of 17 years old. When he embraced Islam, when he embraced Islam, his mother refused to accept his newfound faith. This companion accepted Islam at 17 years old, and when he embraced Islam, there were only three other men before him, and that was Abu Bakr, that was Ali, and that was Zayd ibn Haritha. He was the fourth man to embrace Islam. His mother loved him dearly, and he was very respectful of his mother. So we can do without that. I'm good. Yeah. Comfort brings about ease. I want to be uncomfortable. Because <laughs> when I'm uncomfortable, I'm going to make you uncomfortable. I'm good with that. His mother refused to accept his newfound faith. His mother loved him dearly, and he loved his mother dearly and respected her. And when she found out that he converted to Islam, she was livid. And she tried to get him to denounce his faith, his religion, but to no avail. This particular companion that I'm referring to is none other than Sa'id ibn Abi Waqqas. Sa'id, he narrated the situation himself. He said that his mother came to him when she found out he embraced Islam and she said, Yes, Sa'id, لَقَدْ سَمِعْتُ أَنَّكَ أَسْلَمْتَ وَدَّخَلْتَ فِي دِينِ مُحَمَّدٍ الْجَدِيدِ She said, Oh, Sa'id, I heard that you embraced Islam. And that you entered into the new religion of Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 
And Sa'ad said to his mother, Na'am, ya ummi. He said, Yes, my mother. Qalat, wa laqad sami'tu bi anna Muhammadin ya'murukum bi an takunu ta'i'ina li ummahatikum. She said, and I also heard, pay attention, this is how people try to dump their burden on you. She said, I also heard that Muhammad orders you all, all of you followers of his, to be obedient to your mothers. Is that true? And Sa'ad said, Naam, yes, that's true. Qalat idhin ana ummuk. She said, well then, I'm your mother. Wa amuruka bi an takfur bi Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. She said, well then I'm your mother, and I command you to disbelieve in Muhammad and to separate yourself from the family of Muhammad. She's using the right that Allah gave her, the right that Allah obligated the Muslim to give to the non-Muslim mother, she's using that against him. Your religion commands you to be respectful to your mother and to obey your mother, right? Well, I'm your mother, and I'm telling you to disbelieve in Muhammad, disbelieve in the religion of Islam. And Sa'ad said to his mother, Ya Umma, Wallahi la yakunu dharika. He said, I swear by Allah, Mom, I can't do that. She was inflicting pain on him because she went even further to say, Fa asumu, wa atruku sharab wa ta'am, hatta ta'uda ila dini abaik wa kaumik. She said, well then, I'm going to fast. I'm going to abandon all food, all drink. I'm not going to eat nothing. I'm not going to drink anything until you denounce your faith and return back to the religion of your fathers and your people or I die in the process and your people, your tribe will condemn you for killing your own mother. You see? People want you to take take the burden. This is her action, her behavior, but now I got to be responsible for the end result of your behavior. You see how that works? Gaslighting at its finest. So you get to starve yourself and die, and now I have to carry the burden of that. And these were your actions. You tell your son over and over again, stay out of the streets. Street life ain't for you. Jail is for bums. Jail is not what it is. And he totally disregards you. Goes out into the street and does something to get himself arrested. And then he expects you to carry that burden. So now I got to come visit you. I got to come put money on your books. I got to come and take care of your, your children. That's my burden now? No. I'm not coming to see you. I'm not putting no money on your books. And I'll do whatever I can to help the mother of your children. But that's not my responsibility. I raised you. I raised mine. How about you raise yours? And then when you take that stance, the whole entire family, toxic family, will stand up against you. You're wrong. And then they'll even blame your religion, you know, if they're not Muslim. God forbid they're not Muslim. And then it's like, oh, that religion of Islam. It's just like, no, it's just principle. It's principle. Any good religion has it. It's principle. I have to be responsible for your, I got to carry your burden. La wallahi. And then that same man who goes to jail expects the mother of his children to ride the wave, to do the bid right along with him. You're going to do the bid with me, right? It's like, how many times have I told you, come home, stay away from this one, stay out of the streets? Totally disregarded everybody else. And then when the, the recompense of your actions catch up to you, now I got to carry that burden? No, man. And then when you refuse, you let go, you refuse to carry the burden. And now you're the bad guy. Well, guess what? You, I, and anyone listening have to learn how to be comfortable being the bad guy in somebody else's narrative. Because I might be the bad guy in your narrative, but guess what? You're the bad guy in my narrative. How about that? You messed up. You messed up. So I'm okay with being the bad guy in your narrative because you are the bad guy in my narrative. How about that? I'm okay with that. But I refuse to carry a burden that's not mine. I refuse. Men and women separating from one another, breaking up their families, breaking up their households, 
And then we turn around and say, oh, the kids are suffering, the kids need therapy, the kids need this. Uh, you think? What did you think was going to happen? But when I suggested let's go to marriage counseling, no, I ain't sitting in front of no man and telling him my problems and letting no man judge me. All right. So then what do you think is going to happen to your marriage? You think it's going to fix itself automatically? So then once the marriage separate, we separate, we go our separate ways, and you see your children crumbling under the weight of the decisions that you guys made. Now all of a sudden we want to look for somebody to take the blame. No, carry that. That's your burden. Many sisters have asked brothers over and over and repeatedly, let's go to counseling. Let's go to counseling. Man, I ain't going to counseling. I'm not sitting in front of another man and have him judge me. It's either that or lose your marriage. <laughs> keep your ego and lose your marriage or keep your marriage and humble yourself and lose your ego. Your choice. Pick your pain. It's going to be painful either way. It's going to be painful either way. So she says to Sai that I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to drink until you denounce your faith. And return back to the religion of your forefathers and the religion of your people. She said, or I die in this process and your tribe will condemn you for killing your own mother. So she was inflicting pain on herself. Trying to change something or in this case change some, someone that was out of her control. And she tried to impose that on him by getting him to carry the burden of her death in the end. This is essentially what happens when other people want you to carry their burdens. You have to make a point today in your life that I am only responsible for my own actions and the consequences of my own actions. I am not responsible for anybody else's. I'm sorry. Emotions is, is very limited in today's time. <laughs> Sympathy, very limited. I'm on borrowed time with sympathy. And if there's anybody who is deserving of sympathy and empathy, it's me. I deserve that first before anybody else. So when we learn to let go, brothers and sisters, and let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala handle it, we free ourselves from the things that are out of our control and we experience real happiness. Because our happiness is no longer attached or contingent to anything or anyone that is outside of ourselves. Saad, he says to his mother, and we can use this as our blueprint. He says to his mother in response to her saying she's not going to eat and drink. He said, Ya Ummi, oh my mother, Wallahi inna ki la ta'lamina anni uhibbuk. He said, Wallahi, I swear to God, you know that I love you. You know I love you. And I have to leave with that disclaimer so you don't Take offense to what I'm getting ready to say. I love you. Sometimes you got to leave with that disclaimer so people understand it's coming from a place of love. It's going to hurt, but it's coming from a place of love. I love you. He said, Wakuli awdai. For wallahi lo kana laki mi'atu nafs. Fa kharajat minki nafsin nafsin ma kafaratu bi dini wa ma taraktu ma'amad. He said, My mother. I swear to God, Allah knows, you know I love you, dearly, more than anything. He said, but eat or don't eat. Eat or don't eat. He said, but I swear by Allah, if you had a hundred souls to die multiple times, a hundred times, and each one of your souls was to exit your body, one after the other, you would run out of souls before I would denounce my religion and abandon Muhammad. Go figure. My carry. Basically what he's telling her, you can kill yourself if you want to. I'm not going to carry that burden. You killing yourself is not going to infringe on my life and the path that I have cut out for myself. I, my life is going to go on. You, you follow me? I'm not carrying your burden. If you decide to do that, that's on you. Eat or don't eat. That's your choice. That's what God gave you, the ability to make your decisions. But your decisions, I'm not carrying the burden that comes along with the consequences of your decision. If you die in the process, 
I am not going to feel any type of way. I'm not going to denounce my faith. I'm not going to abandon my husband. I'm not going to abandon what I believe. That's your, that, that was your choice. This is the mentality that we have to have if we want to experience real happiness. People will constantly try to dump their burden on you to guilt you into carrying the burdens of their actions, of their consequences of their behaviors. I'm not going to do that. As a father, many of the dads that are in here, many of the fathers that are in here, sometimes you look at the behavior of some of your children and you start to carry the burden. Man, I could have did better as a father. Man, I failed as a father. Man, Allah's going Allah's to punish me because I should have done this. I should have taught him more Quran. I should have spent more time with him. I should have took him out more. Yeah, you could have done all of that. But that doesn't mean that if you would have done all of that, his behavior would be any different. Stop beating yourself up over the behavior and consequences of a grown man. Your son is grown. Your children are grown. The decisions that they make right now are the decisions that they decided to make. I'm not going to carry that. I'm not going to sit around beating my head on the floor, begging Allah for forgiveness for the sins that my children commit. Got to be kidding me, man. Those are your actions, your decisions. You're an adult. You knew exactly what you were doing before you did it. And I didn't raise you to do that. I didn't raise you to be like that. Brothers and sisters, please understand because this, especially amongst African Americans, this is heavy in our culture. It's almost expected of us in our culture. Woman has a children and then she goes and dumps all of her children off on her mother so she can run the streets. So now your mom is obligated to take care of your children. That's not her job. And if your mom says to you, no, I'm not watching your children, then you get upset. You guilt trip your mom. That's part of our culture. So mom has to now carry the burden of the decisions that you made. You decided to have children. One after the other, after the other, after the other. You decided to do that. And now I'm somehow responsible for your burdens? No, not at all. And I mean, we can use this scenario, we can use the concept and apply it to scenario after scenario after scenario. Hopefully, inshallah, to out of the examples that we use here today are clear. And we know how to use this concept moving forward. When you walk out of this door today, you walk out of this door laying down your burdens. I'm no longer carrying burdens for anybody else other than myself. And I guarantee you, your life will change the moment you decide to do that. Many of us are miserable in our lives right now, not because of things that we have done to ourselves, but because of the burdens that we are carrying for other people. Secrets that people have told you. Yo, keep this between me. Nah, man, don't make me responsible for your burdens, man. No. Actions, things that people have done in front of us, and then they expect us to kind of keep that on the low. One of the Sahaba, he had multiple children. He went, North Man of Bashir, he went and he bought a gift for one of his children and didn't buy a gift for the other. North Man's wife went to the Prophet and said, This is not right. How you buy toys for one child and don't buy toys for another child? And the Prophet ﷺ went and confronted Norman and said, Did you buy a gift for one of your children and didn't buy for the other? And he said, Yes. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Energy, take it back. And you either give all of the children the same uh, a gift or you give none of them. You don't get to choose one and then exclude the others. Take it back and either give all of them the gift or take it back from all of them and do not make me witness your oppression, your unjust behavior again. Don't make me a witness. Don't make me a witness to your sin. Don't make me a witness to your injustice. That's a burden. Because <laughs> now I got to testify against you, your Muqiyama. I don't want to be a witness to that. Don't involve me in your stuff because that's a burden. I don't want to be a part of that. This is why when people come to you backbiting, you tell them, listen, don't do that around me. Because if you backbite around me, you're making me a witness to your sinful behavior. I don't want that burden. Because now when you talk about this man behind that, that person's back, and I'm sitting there listening to you, when I come in front of that man again, now I've got to act funny in front of him. 
When people act funny in front of you, it's because they talked about you behind your back. And they don't, now they don't know how to deal with you because you're right in their face. Facts. But if you don't entertain it, don't bring that around me, man. That's girl behavior. Don't bring that around. Don't sit around and talk about another man behind. Don't bring that to me, man. Do that over there, man. Don't make me a witness to your sinful behavior. That's a burden I got to carry. Now when I see this man, it's hard for me to deal with him fairly because I don't entertain all of the stuff that you done said about him. Now it makes me hard for me to have a genuine interaction with him based upon my own knowledge of who he is. That's a burden, man. I'm not carrying that. So, Scenario after scenario after scenario, and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He frees us from the burdens that are not ours. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free us from the burdens that are not ours. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to liberate us from the burdens that are not ours. Oh Allah, we ask you for the good of this life and the good of the hereafter and to save us from the hellfire. Allahumma ati anfusana taqwaha. وزكها أنت خير من زكها أنت وليها ومولاها Oh Allah give our souls its taqwa for you are the best to purify it and you are its wali wa mawla you are its guardian you are its protector Oh Allah we ask you for your forgiveness Allahumma inna nas'aluk al-huda wa tuqa wa al-fafa wa al-ghina Allahumma inna na'udhu bi ridhaka min sakhatik Oh Allah, we seek refuge with your pleasure from your anger. We'll be ma'afatika min uqubatik. And we seek refuge with your, with your protection from your punishment. We'll be kamink and we seek refuge with you from you. La nuhsi thana'an alayka wa lo harasna. We cannot praise you as you deserve to be praised, even if it was our ardent desire. And to come at ala nafsik, you are as you have praised yourself. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Wa sallama tasliman kathira. Wa subhanaka rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa aqimu as-sara. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan rasulullah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan rasulullah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan rasulullah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan rasulullah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan rasulullah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan rasulullah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan rasulullah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan rasulullah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan rasulullah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan rasulullah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan rasulullah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan rasulullah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan rasulullah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an